Hello all you winners out there, my name is Randomness for the Windman, and welcome to Dust, an Elysian Tale. El Elysian Tale? I really don't remember how they pronounced it. it I, the last time I played this was a little bit ago. Um, it was it was a cool minute ago, but this game is... Uh, this game is so beautiful, it is so good. The story is amazing. The characters are awesome. The art style is just so beautiful. I remember I was sitting in my Photoshop class at college, and I was talking with my one friend because it was we were on our break because it was a three-hour class. So we we got a break, and we were talking, and I was like, "So what's like, what like we were just talking about games?" And he said, "What's one of your favorite recent games?" And he was like, "Dust and Elysian Tale." I was like, huh, I've heard about that, like, I've seen other people, like, talk about it, but, like, I don't know, like, what it's about, he's like, he was like, it's such a good game, you should really give it a shot, really, really play, it's an amazing game, and that's all he said, he was like, I bought it for 360, and I have it for PC, that's what he told me, and... I was like, okay, alright, uh, I, I'll take a look into it, and I shit you not, the next month, which, like, a week later, which is when the new Games with Gold cycled, Dust and Elysian Tale was free, so I, we, went, we sat in class, like, the second day, and I was like, so, guess what's free with gold this week, this, like, for the first two weeks, he was like, I know, Get it. You will not be disappointed. I bought it, I downloaded it, and I didn't touch it for a while. And then I was just sitting there, bored one day, like, I really wasn't in the mood to play anything. So I was like, you know what, I'll start Dust, I'll get an achievement or two, you know, get a decent into the story. And I will be done for the night. Um, I played the, the prologue found an easter egg and then i played through the first chapter and i was like i should really stop playing and get to bed because it's actually pretty late um but this game is so beautiful the story is oh I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna we're just gonna get into it i have beaten this game twice okay this is not where my save was but i have beaten this game twice i'm, I'm, I'm actually gonna show you something I have gotten all the achievements, and I d only beat it on tough. I was not doing it on hardcore, and I finished it December. Um, see, I started playing it back in May of last year. Oh my god, it's been an entire year. It's been more than a year since this game came out on Games of Gold. As you can see, I gamed hard that day and I beat the first one and then I stopped and then I didn't play for about another week and yeah and then I took a break and then I came back and did some mop up achievements and yeah and then I finally finished the game and then I played it on hard or tough and this game was one of my favorite games to perfect um so I'm, I'm just gonna read you the descriptions for the elite few who seek impossible odds as each other as each encounter becomes a test of will simply choosing this option demands respect 
Increase difficulty, recommended for seasoned players of action games, encounter smarter and tougher enemies. The default difficulty, expect a fair challenge. Ideal for casual and young players, or those who simply wish to enjoy the story. Easy settings are enabled with no death penalty. Okay, this is how I'm going to play the game. I'm not playing it on hardcore. Tough was really hard, like I maxed out my level by the end of the third chapter, I was the max level, and I was still having a hard time. I don't even want to see hardcore. Oh my god, no. Now, this is the kind of game that I would choose normal, but I'm actually going to go casual, and I'm going to explain why. Dust and Elysian Tale, I mean, granted, it's a very good game, but Dust and Elysian Tale is a 2D side-scroller hack-and-slash RPG, alright? It's an RPG in the sense you level up, you can level up your character, your side character, you can level up, um, or your partner, uh, the gear you equipped, like rings and, and cloaks and stuff like that, they increase stats, um, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, and there's also a few other things about it, but that's what it is. It's a hack and slash. This is a game you would like, you would play for the story, but the, but they had to come up with some kind of gameplay mechanics so they made it a default hack and slash which isn't bad like it really works with this game because it, it when you get further into the story you'll understand why dust is a swordsman and why he's a seasoned swordsman even though he doesn't even know who he is he because he has amnesia and later on we'll find out why he has amnesia why he feels a strong connection to certain characters and at the same time why he had why he's such a good swordsman and why he has connections to certain characters so it's a really good game I cannot wait to jump into it um, but we're gonna play casual because the game isn't that hard on normal, don't get me wrong, it is not hard on normal. But, this is the kind of game that I've beaten it twice, and even on my first playthrough, like, at the end of chapter 2, the only time I had a great, a, like, a fun time fighting was during boss battles. Um, the rest of the time I was like, I don't even care, I just want to run past these things. Um, but sometimes you can't, so it's like, ugh. So, we're gonna play casual because it's just, this is gonna be like a, like, think of it as like a Telltale Games playthrough, where it's just a story game, but, uh, it's going to be a bit, there's gonna, there's still gonna be gameplay, but it's not gonna be a lot of gameplay, it's gonna be a big story-driven game. Think of it like, a like a Persona game, Persona 3, Persona 4, where, you know, like, the gameplay is there, but it's not really there, so, think of it kind of like that game. Our world has fallen to failure, its great works long since complete, its storied civilizations long since fallen to dust, the greatest legends of Elysium long since forgotten. What was once a land of promise has fallen to the ravages of war. I had to get a drink of water. And it was in this, our most desperate hour, that the greatest of Elysian tales Elysian. began. Dust and Elysian tale. The lone warrior stood against an army. Now this is cool. We actually control this part. Opposed him. The mob stood no chance, and the soldier showed no mercy. But despite his victory, I don't have any combos. His skills, his ruthlessness. The valiant soldier would perish on this day. 
not to the mother, but to a single child. Now remember that. That little dialogue Dust. is going to be Dust. very important later. Arise. arise, chicken. Chicken, arise. Arise, chicken. Chicken, arise. What? A talking sword? What are you? Only that which you have summoned. Summoned? How? For what purpose? That I do not know. But we shall learn in time. Now rise <laughs> and claim the blade of Ara. Awesome. Ah, my favorite character of the whole game. Stop. Stop right there. And who is she? Me? I'm Fidget, guardian of the sword. Okay. So, we get very few options like this, where it's like we get to actually choose an option. But, um, just to let you know, Dust and Elysian Tail is... All of the characters are animals, or representation of animals. Or some kind of animal-like being. So, um, yeah. <laughs> just just wanted to let you get, let you know that, but... Like, when I first played this game for the very first time and it opened up with this field, I was like, this like, it was like literally in the first 10 seconds, I was like, this game is so beautiful. So beautiful. I loved it from like the very first second I started playing it. And it was one of my, f it, it became one of my favorite hack and slash RPG type games. It was amazing. So, what is this? And as we leave the meadow, you'll see how beautiful it is. And this is on the 360. They made a PS4 version. Imagine it on PS4 or PC where, like, it's better. Like, graphics and frames. It's like, it'll be like, ugh. Then you leave me no choice. I... I challenge you! The winner gets the sword! Fidget, why? Well, I... Alright, alright, you win. But don't think I'm leaving empty-handed. I'm coming with you. But, um, I really need the sword back when you're done doing... You know, whatever it is you're doing. What exactly am I doing, <laughs> Ara? <laughs> the fuck am I doing? Seek lie to the east. There is a path through the glade that leads down the mountainside. And from there you will find a village. That is your first step. Then will you give me the sword? I really need to get it back home before anyone notices it's uh, gone. When I find out just what it is I'm supposed to do with it, it's all yours, Fidget. Come on, let's go. Fidget is my favorite character in this game. She is... Like, I love her voice actor. Like, look at this. Look how beautiful. Beautiful this is. Oh, okay, cool. I didn't even know that was there. Uh, so, okay, welcome to your inventory. From this screen, you can manage equipment and items. If your health is low, indicated by the green bar in your HUD, you can assign a healing item to the quick item slot and quickly use it in-game with left bumper. Note the context-sensitive controls at the bottom of each screen for additional options. Okay, so... Treasure keys are a single-use key that can be used to open treasure chests and cages. There is an achievement in this game to find all 12 of your friends in treasure chests, in, uh, like, cages, and you need four keys to open them. Uh, I'm not going to be getting all of them, if any, because this is casual. Like, when you play it on the harder settings, it's kind of mandatory that you get them because they increase your stats a bit as well for each one you find. But I don't think I'm going to need them in this playthrough. I mean, I'll try and find one or two, but I don't know. I will, I'll probably be opening more chests than cages with them. If I have a few to spare, I will definitely open one. Alright, welcome to the character screen. From here, you can assign skill gems acquired by leveling up to improve your attributes. Note that your highest stat must be within four gems of your lowest stat. Okay, 
So yeah, so if this was four, I would have to give each of these one before I could put another one into health. Welcome to your map. From here you can view explored areas and within the current region you can also get a sense of any treasure within the immediate vicinity. Yeah, okay, so the flag is where we have to go. Welcome to your quest log. From here you can view active and completed quests as well as any notes you've picked up. Dust to dust. You've woken up in a small glade in the mountains with no memory of your past. An ancient magical blade, Ara, and its guardian, Fidget, have joined with you. With no other path to travel, the road to the east is your only option. Welcome to the materials screen. Materials are collected from enemies and can be crafted into better equipment by a blacksmith. Materials can also be sold to shops. Once cataloged, shops will attempt to restock their inventory. Use this to your advantage when materials are scarce. Yes, whenever I find an item, I always sell it to the merchant because I can always go back and get more. Um, especially if an item is really rare, like you can sell it to him and you'll come back like in about an hour or so and he'll have like four or five. So it's always a good idea to sell any item to them for the first time. Welcome to the stats screen. On this page, you can view various gameplay statistics. Yes. Uh, I've explored no world. Max hit chain is a 55. Okay. There is actually a side quest to get a thousand hit combo, and it's also an achievement. Oh my god. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What Okay. I was trying to figure out those combos earlier yeah see this is the treasure chest like I'd be opening a lot of those the glade oh my god this game is so beautiful mm, oh I love it so much yeah it's one of those games where you can look up or down Kinda of cool. You could also get a double jump later. Mysterious wall chicken. It's basically your health. Hmm. Well, you can use it to restore your health. Well, my kind has what you'd call a sixth sense. And there's something just ahead. Fidget will alert you when a treasure is nearby. Click R to access the map. Yeah, see, when you're in an area like this, a dot like that means it's been fully explored. When there's a circle, it means there's like a treasure or something. So, uh, how did... I remember being able to drop down. Um... Ba -ba -ba -ba. Um. Okay, I don't remember how to drop down. Oh! Yeah, the dash is really good. Like it's a really good. Um. I've also noticed my health bar and my stamina bar are pretty much maxed out, so I don't think uh, <laughs> I need to worry about them for right now. I guess that's just because it's a casual. Okay, I was doing that. Uh, whatever. Come on, just break open. A healing item has been placed in your quick item slot. Press left bumper to heal or select to manage your inventory. Treasure added. In ancient times, our greatest possessions and staunchest allies were locked away using powerful magic beyond our comprehension. The only way to reclaim these lost treasures is to use the magical attuned keys strewn about our world. I only hope there is enough time to free them all. So this basically talks to you about the 12 creatures that are um, locked away in crates or cages and staunchiest allies. So they're allies. So the more you unlock, the more you get. Like you'll get increases to all of your stats and stuff. But I will be mostly using the keys on these because these give you Correct. healing items and we stuff. Found a locked chest. 
Well, what are you waiting for? Smash it open. <laughs> Speak my language. These chests are protected by arcane locks from the last era, and are well beyond my capabilities. Now we just gotta hit it harder. I suppose we'll need a key then. 